So today let's talk about one of the cheapest iPhones you can get, which is the iPhone SE2. It's pretty ridiculous. You can find this easily for around $100 refurbished. And so some of you guys might be wondering, should you buy this in 2023? So let's begin with the design and yes, this looks pretty archaic by today's standards. The phone is essentially based on the iPhone 8, which is based on the iPhone 6. And so here we have a design that's nearly a decade old and Apple actually still sells this because the SE3 looks near identical to this. But honestly guys, after going back to this form factor from a 14 Pro Max, it's not that big of an issue. Now, yes, I know refurbished Android phones, even at this price, look a lot more modern, but they also have chunky bezels. So the SE2 in comparison's not that bad. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this. It would be appreciated. And there is a plus here with the older design language, which is Touch ID, because as much as I like Face ID and I've been happily using it for years, using Touch ID again does make me miss it a little because there are some angles where Face ID sometimes does not work at, but that's really not an issue for Touch ID. So yes, guys, the scan on this is super fast and reliable. And of course, the very nice haptic feedback with the home button is a nice bonus. The display also is something people often complain about. And while it does pale in comparison to what Android phones at this price offer, I can once again live with it because Apple devices usually have great LCDs. And even with the low resolution on paper, this still looks fine for the most part. I don't mind the 60 Hz refresh rate. It's got P3 support, so colors look great. And yeah, it's fine for regular usage, guys. I will say the only issue I faced was brightness. It's just not enough for outdoor usage. But to be fair, comparable Android phones at this price also don't have very bright panels. And personally, the screen size is a non-issue because I don't watch videos very often on my phone. I'm usually scrolling on social media. And so for that purpose, the display is more than fine and the compact size is actually quite refreshing compared to my 14 Pro Max. Now the build here is also a lot better than most comparable Android phones at this price. It's aluminium and glass, which feels very nice in the hand. But you do also get wireless charging and IP67, which are rarities at this kind of price point. But by far the best part about this iPhone and the aspect that blows me away is the power this phone has. So in here is the A13 chip and yes, I'm aware this originally debuted with the iPhone 11 that launched all the way back in 2019 pre-COVID times. But the crazy thing is, this is still a lot more powerful than most mid-range and low-end Android phones on the market. For example, the very popular Galaxy A54 has an SoC on par with the A12, which came out in 2018 with the iPhone XS. And so the performance to price ratio with the SE is pretty insane. Now you could argue, why does this matter? Because a lot of low-end Android phones are still good enough for most people's needs, right? Well, yeah, that is true, but you do definitely notice those phones chug a little when playing more complex games, whereas this plays most games without breaking a sweat. Now, I'm definitely not a serious mobile gamer, but my brother who has an iPad 9 that, of course, has the same SoC inside, plays all kinds of games 24-7, and he's never once complained about the performance. And so, yes, as one expects, no performance issues with the A13, and general usage on the SE is super fluid, and coupled with the optimization of iOS, this phone outperforms every other phone at this price point. If anything, the only performance related issue I've had is RAM because this has three gigs and that's pretty limiting nowadays. And I do see apps don't stay in the background as often, but honestly guys, I should not be complaining about this when the phone's $100. At the end of the day, most are gonna be very happy with the performance and especially for the price, it's rock solid. And another great thing about this having the A13 is that it should still get support for quite a while. So right now the A12 devices are the oldest iPhones to support iOS 17. And so you should likely get another one or two years of support, which is pretty impressive considering most refurbished and used Android phones at this kind of price might not even get any support. And the good news continues because we have now come to the camera on this iPhone, which once again is one of the best at this price point. Now, to be fair, you can find Pixel A phones that are around the same price and have great cameras, but I would argue the SC2 offers the overall better camera experience mainly because of the video quality. Yes, it has a small sense on paper and also does not have many zoom options, 
because it's only one lens on the back of the device, but basic video footage on this looks really good and you won't find this from most phones at this price. In fact, some of you guys could consider starting a channel with this because the 4K video footage is that good and you're likely not gonna find an actual camera at this price that offers comparable footage. And yes, this might not offer some of the newer features like ProRes or cinematic video, but for this kind of price, I'm not too annoyed by that. And for recording those special moments, this camera delivers. But also photos from the SE looks great. This has Smart HDR Gen 2 that debuted with the iPhone 11. And so even though the sensors from the 10 it's actually better than that. And overall produces fantastic shots in most lighting conditions. I say most because annoyingly there's no night mode on this. That's really the big feature Apple refuses to bring to the SE range. And even the SE 3 today does not have this. But thankfully, you do get all the portrait mode features. Also, while the selfie camera might only be 7 megapixels, because of Apple's computational magic, it still performs pretty well for the most part. And so yes, overall guys, I'm very happy with the cameras. Speakers and mic-wise, I've also had no issues. They're very solid. And here's a sample for you guys. And here's a video mic test for you guys on the iPhone SE. Now everything so far sounds great, but some of you guys might be wondering, how's the battery life on this? And well, it's not good guys. Simply put, I'm getting three to four hours of screen on time on this phone. And that's with basically a new battery inside. And so yeah, this definitely is the biggest reason I would recommend considering the SE3 instead because if you do like this form factor, you can find those for $200 refurbished. I've made a video regarding this phone that I'll leave in the iCard above. But yeah, you get the newer A15 in this and much better endurance. Another upgrade the SE3 has that's somewhat important is 5G support. Now yes, at one point in time, I could care less about this, but as 5G infrastructure continues to improve in the UK, I definitely have noticed a huge improvement in 5G speeds in my area. So yes, going back to a 4G only device, there was a big difference. Though I do want to mention this could be partly because some carriers are artificially reducing their 4G speeds just to make the jump to 5G seem more significant. However, once again, I do want to say that if you're buying this for $100, you probably don't have very high expectations. And so if you're on a tight budget, you probably don't care about this not having 5G. And also remember, 5G varies per country. And if you live in a place where there's not much 5G infrastructure, then yes, the SE2 being 4G only is a non-issue. Plus, if you're mostly at home anyways, Wi-Fi performance is very good on this. And I also have not had any Bluetooth issues. Also, if you're willing to live with a power bank or of course have a charger near you at most times, you can work around the poor endurance because the battery is tiny in this, it does charge up pretty fast. So yes, you can give this multiple top ups and get through the day. And that kind of sums up my thoughts on this phone. I can nitpick all day and talk about the compromises, but at the end of the day, guys, it's only $100. And for that kind of price, the fact this runs the latest version of iOS, runs all the new apps, and also has no performance issues for the most part, is impressive enough. And so yes, if you're looking for a phone on a strict budget, or want a backup device, the SE2 will continue being a bargain in the used and refurbished market for the foreseeable future. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.